Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Look, you saw by the thumbnail, and I think you can see by the movie that I'm standing in front of, and heck, I'm even wearing my Omega Tomorrow Never Dies watch, that I'm here to talk about Tomorrow Never Dies, and it actually made my top five favorite Bond movies. Why? Well, I know that it doesn't get a lot of love for some reason, but I just thought Brazen was amazing in it. I thought the story's fun, fun, exciting, and you know, one of the biggest things is gadgets galore. But I'm gonna tell you a little story, and it's gonna start off a little boo-hoo-ish, but you'll get over it very quickly, I know I did. So many, many, many years ago, when I first started this Bond hobby of mine, gosh, I was probably like 30, 31 years old, had a little spending money, and I actually purchased uh, the screen used Tomorrow Never Dies phone, the Ericsson phone that he uses to remote control the car from the movie. Yes, it was screen used. I was so excited. Um, there were dummy ones made. There were screen used ones. Was this thing that on film? Who knows? But I was so tickled pink, came from a great source, and I was ecstatic. However, I was collecting a lot of things besides Bond back then, and quite frankly, I was purchasing a house. Young executive, house, Ericsson phone. I sold it. I did. Yeah, it's one of my regrets. I've got like three regrets in selling, you know, props and items from my collection. That's definitely one of the three. But I sold it and went to a great home. Point being is, there was a gap in my Tomorrow Never Dies collection. And mind you, at this point, this is what started the ball rolling to get me into the sartorial side of things and the, the experiential side of James Bond. That, that phone just captured the fun factor for me in Bond's gadgets, even a great Q scene. I mean, all the elements are there. Well, let's fast forward to when I was doing an, the Octopussy Saw review from our good friend Klaus from Finland with love. You know him, you love him. He is a, 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 just an, a, a part of the global Q branch that has been created by these great prop, prop replica artists. And we started talking, and I noticed in the background he had a phone or a cutout of a phone, and he has the actual phone, and we just started talking about it. And I, I told him my rather s sad story. So here's what he did. He, he uh, you know, he made a phone. <laughs> he made a phone! And today we're going to talk to you about how he made it. We're going to talk to him about his inspiration. But first and foremost, let's talk about the phone. I just opened it up, and here it is. Now, interestingly enough, um, he had a styrofoam version or a foam back version that was very flat, but obviously you could see this is not flat. This is a three-dimensional prop with buttons. We'll get nice and close for you to see. Look at those. And a screen. And look at the back. And the right colors, the right images, the right markings that you would expect on something like this. But Klaus knew that this was going in my collection. So, you know, he's a graphic artist by trade. What does he do? He builds a display that is <laughs> worthy of Q Branch to actually hold the phone. Hold the phone! Hey, hold the phone! Sorry, there'll be more dad jokes coming. Wait for them. But this is now how it's going to sit in the collection. This is amazing. Now, I've got to tell you, when I unbox this, when I unbox this absolute beauty, there was a note because there's you know, just, you got to talk to customs every now and then. So I want to read you this note. It's hysterical. U.S. Customs. This phone is only a prop. It is not a taser, fingerprint scanner, or a lock picking tool. And if Mr. Zeritsky will try driving his car from the back seat with it, it is his own damn fault. Klaus Sohohen. So Klaus is, um, he's a comedian. He's funny. He's pithy. And he's talented. So here's what we're going to do without further ado. Um, I'm going to, I already have a place. Watch. Ah, I'm, I'm all geeking out. This is kind of emotional. Here we go. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? So, I mean, I'm just jonesing a little bit because it's kind of back. I mean, this is a lost and found moment. It's, it's a bit emotional for a collector. And even though it's not the same exact one, it's not screen use, it's not even one of the dummy ones, Klaus replicated that. And I'm still getting those same chills as a collector. He did a great job. But you know what? I'm chatting to you and this is great. I like you. Um, but let's go talk to him, shall we? 
Okay, and you know that geography and time can never separate Klaus and I. Klaus, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's an honor to be here again. The, the honor is mine. The thank yous are mine. I was just gushing over this amazing piece, which I really have not been able to put down. But we've got a lot to talk about, because even though I was talking about my history with the piece, um, our quick discussion, I, I really want to talk to you about this, because some of this and, and many of your projects are inspired by things that you really want and want to do, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that piece has that in a way <clears throat> that phone was the one first item that did turn me into collecting props. Before that, I was collecting movie toys and stuff. And it, it wasn't only James Bond things. It was this and that. And then James Bond has grown and grown. And, and then that was the first prop that I got that kind of really changed the game in a way. And and uh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic piece. And there is this, um, uh, this um, yeah, I mean, I've been wondering the, about the story and and you might know that i did an interview with this uh the designer yes uh, and, and and that's a that's on my my channel it's quite interesting to hear the story behind it so now we know a little bit more about it but it's also been a little bit mysterious that that how what happened there's not no info about it actually so uh yeah so it's been an important kind of item for me and i got one of those prop ones and i've been mm -hmm. somehow it's kind of a holy grail for correct collectors, I think. And yeah. I've been kind of urging to somehow recreate it. Well, it's what to me, it's one of the top props yeah. in the entire franchise. I mean, it does so many things. When you think about a gadget, never mind just a prop, but a gadget, um, it had such an impact on me in 1997 when I saw it. And for me, as I explained earlier in this video, it did start my collecting habit hobby, my connection to the community. So this was such an important part. And then, you know, selling my original, which was yeah. very difficult, but then you have gone and you perform these little miracles, you know, whether it's the, the octopus you saw or, or many of the things, the Baron Samadhi, I, I see things in the background. You recreate this movie magic and bring it to the table. So, I mean, was it a bit daunting when you were thinking about recreating something like this? Well, I've been thinking about it for a long time and it's really difficult to do because you might have seen that people have made these 3D versions and some of them are quite skillfully made, but it's so super difficult to make it to actually then, uh, I mean, already if you manage to make it or sandpaper it down and make it look good, then still uh, getting all these small numbers and everything in place, it's, it's really difficult. So I kind of had to <laughs> come up with a new, new idea and it's because we had this chat and you saw that phone behind me and you just mentioned it and I have had have, have used it sometimes for when I'm designing something for some companies to, to make this use this uh, foam board to just cut out some extra pieces for me when there's been extra space on the sheet and uh, and then we started talking and, and I was kind of surprised that it looks quite good this this piece already and I was thinking that hey maybe I could make a smaller one or maybe I could make one for you since you don't have one and then I of course started to think about it but then I kind of went a little bit further and one step further and one step further and then it got into actually making it look much more realistic than just a cutout but still the method is in a way uh, it's not 3d printed it's kind of a uh, some trickery used there <laughs> Well, all right. So without further ado, you were kind enough to actually put together a video of the creation of this. So why don't we go to that and then we'll come back and discuss the insanity behind this. All right. Okay. This is how I created the phone. Uh, I decided from early on that I'm not going to try to do this part. This is actually quite difficult to do. And maybe in the future, I could try to make a model like that. But this method that I'm using is actually just to make a really nice display phone. I've also noticed that I have it always like this and, it, and, and uh, I want it to look good. So the method I used is using some trickery and some fooling the eye. But uh, it ended up being really, really good looking, I think. And even from a close distance, uh, better than a, a 3D printed version that I... I would try to do. So 
the process is first I start with this piece of wood and uh, I had it water cut so I ordered this water cut out according to my drawing then I started with a lot of sand so I sand it down to make it a little bit round on the back side after that I put a lot of uh, what's it called filler on and then I sand some more a lot of sanding and when it feels even enough then I painted it with some primer color and uh, I actually also sawed off one piece here because there is this hinge part uh, that I wanted to look good so what I did is I, I cut off a piece ta -ta -ta -ta, and then then uh, sanded that also so I get this kind of a shape and when I'm happy with 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 this uh, primer and some more sanding and sanding and sanding then I painted it with uh, some metal color and uh, you see that hinge looks quite nice and this is the back of the phone and then finally I do some masking and mask and then I do the black paint and the final backside looks like this okay so this is the back I, I want it to be a little bit round and a little bit nice still because when you look from the side it looks nice if it curves a little bit like the, the real phone so then we need a front for it and that's actually the tricky part so I used some trigger I first created recreated this file with Photoshop so that I actually made all these buttons and everything I, I kind of drew everything again so I'm a graphic designer so so it took some time but I could make an, a file that's super exact and good looking and then I made a, a punch I think it's called a punch uh, or they made according to my wishes at the print house and then they could punch out these kind of pieces and it's quite fun because it it looks quite realistic already because there's some shadowing going on it's all very kind of sharp and good looking and it's contrast enough so it looks already quite good so then I had this part made and this is uh, cut out with laser and this is uh, going to be the screen and actually a, a part of the phone also so then this sticker is applied on this plexi piece acrylic piece piece and then I have made a sticker which is the screen this I also redrew uh, completely so that's then applied on the back side so this is a very nice effect because then you have kind of a glossy screen it's important and then you also have some distance between these so it looks realistic in that way and this part is then applied on the wooden part so it looks like this so this is already nice looking I still wanted it to look more realistic so what I did was I designed buttons they're stickers that they drip some plastic material on and they put it in the oven and then it dries uh, and becomes domed sticker and those I put on then so I ordered all those parts and uh, from Holland and then I put them on with tweezers and that actually makes it look really really good and convincing so there's a little bit of that 3d effect and actually this also looks quite nice this is then totally flat actually and these buttons are flat but with the nice shadowing in the picture it looks really convincing so even if I have it in my hand like this and I've shown it to people people have thought that it's a real phone then when you touch it you, you notice that it actually is flat the real phone curves a little bit so I've done the curving with some uh, shadowing shading so this is it it won't open but it looks really good it's actually I think looking better than the real deal when on display and of course it would be fun if it would open up but the thing is that I think it's more important that uh, that the phone is uh, looking really good on display so then I still wanted to make uh, a kind of stand for it so I did this kind of a let's make some room then I made a stand that looks like like this 
I can show you a little bit closer. Looks pretty cool. And then there's also a classic background, so like this. So this is two sided, and it, and it can be, it can be put there, like that. Because sometimes I might want to have the kind of movie poster in the background. So yeah, this is how I made it. Hey, thank you for watching. I hope you like the video. Uh, this has been from Finland. We love. Take care. Be safe. Bye. My head is blowing up because the reality is, is the details that you put into this. I mean, you and I would talk every now and then we would jump on a Zoom call, not video recorded, and you would show me the next advancement. And by the way, people out there need to know, if Klaus had sent me a paper version with a little bit of foam backing that was flat, I would have been a little kid on Christmas morning. But instead, you saw what he did with, you know, ordering these numbers and the screen and, and look at that. I mean, the detail and ooh, it's got this faintness of Krylon. I love that. Um, but everything was just so perfectly done. You really do take pride in your work. So if somebody's going to own something of yours or put it in their collection, like I'm going to, you really care about that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of stepping into other people's shoes in that way that I somehow feel that we all have the same thing. We, we, we want to put it there. We want to look at it and uh, it kind of has to look really good. And there was one guy who I actually, another uh, other collector who I made one and this button had been a little bit tilted and, it, and we discussed this and he took it off and I sent the new button and this and that because we really look at these things. And uh, so I'm also in that way uh you know minding all the details because i know everyone else is looking about them look look yeah looking at them and, and kind of yeah so in that way i'm in a way uh, uh, uh what do you call it uh a detail guy but then again i also understand that that since i can't do it totally realistic then i'm going to use another method which is going to make it look really good when it when it's displayed and that was the idea that it's displayed on and it, in a way, you haven't had that in your, it's a major piece, you need to have it there. So I'm thinking of how it should look. Like yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, you know what's really, really cool about this is when it came out of the box, and I, I already talked about this, but, oh, and of course it falls. That's real. That's really I've happening. It many times. It's very durable, so no problem. You won't break the glass in this one. That was like a perfect test of that, but I'm going to hold it anyway. But I love the fact that there almost seems to be like a shadowing. It, at first, it almost looks like an overspray of yeah. paint, but it's that shadowing to give it dimensionality because you had said to me, you know, oh, from two or three feet away, it, it should look really real. I can bring this up close and it looks incredibly real. It's only when you start to run your fingers over it that you feel some of, you know, the, the dimensionality playfulness that you've created. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And this, this, I mean, in the beginning, I was thinking that I wouldn't have these buttons. And, uh, and we even had some discussions uh, over Zoom talking about this one button that actually doesn't like uh, dent out like it does like this. It actually goes inwards. And we had these discussions and uh, we decided to put it there still because it gives this, that's kind of the effect that fools the eye. So even if this part is flat here, these buttons come out and, and, and without those, without the glare kind of, you get the three-dimensional glare, it wouldn't look so realistic. But that part is... Uh, is and in the beginning, I thought that I'm going to make it more simple. So, so it's just going to be seen from the front. So I thought that this hinge part could also be thick. It doesn't matter from the front. But then, you know, then I started thinking about it. Well, people will still have it in their hand. So I, I did the hinge part like smaller, like it should be. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, those, those are the details that I think make you the amazing, and I'll, I'll say it, you're an artist, you know, and I know that, you know, much of what you've done in the design of, you know, even the display, you know, the creativity around it is what you do in your everyday vocation, thinking about those details, putting that back panel on in case people want to switch it around, which I think yeah. is genius. Yeah. Um, all this is removable and you can just kind of switch it out, but there's just something very Q branch techno about this side. 
Yeah, it, it's really fun. I mean, that is, yeah, I'm a graphic designer, so it's kind of easy to do those flat things. The three-dimensional things, they're kind of a new thing for me uh, to think about. But but yeah, I mean, that's kind of an important factor, I think, those displays. And when you put it surrounding something, you now had that, but if I had, for instance, this the poster one, it, it kind of, when it's in the right environment, in a way, you see some some something from the movie, it, it adds quite a lot to it. It's amazing. So, all right, you do this. And I mean, I, first of all, again, I need to thank you profusely. There was a huge gaping opening in my collection for all these years. And again, it's one of my top movies. In fact, there was a top five initiative that went around. I saw you participated in it as well. Tomorrow Never Dies was in my top five, like hand yeah. on heart. I have so much heart for that movie. And you've literally delivered to me by your own hands, this is remarkable to me, the prop from the movie, the one that everybody walked out of the theater whistling about yeah. and wanting. And Klaus, I can't thank you enough. Just thank you so much for this. Hey, this was fun. It's always fun to, to make something for someone who appreciates it. And, and as I've said before, like just collecting these things alone, not sharing and not looking at other, other people's, it's quite boring. Uh, so it's very important to look at what other people do and to share these things and uh, to, to see a glimpse of, glimpse of that in your collection here. And, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, it's, it's fun for me. So I, I'm going to ask you a question to which you are probably not prepared for. Yeah. And we did not talk about these ahead of time. So this is very real. But being the angsty, passionate artist and Bond fan that you are, you must have another project in mind that's always clawing at you. So what's, what's your next project that you're looking to do? Uh, well, I have something going on all the time, yeah, and uh, I mean, I've been, I'm also fiddling like with kind of ridiculous things, but I, I was just thinking here one day that uh, what, uh, if, if Q is program, programming these phones, he might, you know, have some, some kind of field case where he has his, uh, can, I wonder if you can see where he has, uh, oh my gosh. You know, that's crazy, it's got the keyboards and everything. Yeah, so. Uh, and kind of tacky screens from the from 97 but uh, the idea that how would it look so i think it's quite fun also to expand these things like we have friends who make props and sometimes they make these files with a lot of paper and they've been thinking through what would be in the file and they go into every detail and that's quite fun so in a way expanding what we don't see on the screen that's always fun so i'm, I'm actually working on some things for, around these phones and i've also made this one version just for myself which is this kind of a so cool cut, cut out version uh and, and then we see i haven't made an open one because with this this method is so difficult but but um i could make it maybe make the one with the, the spikes coming out that could be qu quite fun and oh, quite yeah. easy, easy to modify from this just to change the screen and then make the spikes it could also be just static and look quite fun but anyway something with this but yeah i'm all, all the time thinking i'm googling a little bit that how does the atac look like from uh uh, for your eyes only, and so, uh, this and that. So all the time thinking, but I, I don't know exactly what's going to be the next. How thing. would you yeah. make the ATAC? Would you take an existing piece, or would you start from scratch? Well, that's that's the that's the problem. Uh, I mean, in a way, it's kind of easy to make the form. It's just the buttons that that then either I should find this some kind of cashier machine buttons that could be modified or used, or of course three D printed. Uh, but I, I, I'm not so good at using the 3D printer yet, or then uh, some other method. So uh, yeah, I'm all the time looking at these things, and uh, that could be a quite kind of a fun to have. The ATAC would be insane. Yeah. I mean, that that's something that people have talked about probably for decades, but yeah. nobody. I mean, it's that's a pretty robust project. Yeah. I'm going to make one, and then I'm going to throw it down from a mountain. That's the thing. Oh my gosh. But by the way, the other the other prop that I was thinking about from Tomorrow Never Dies is, of course, the uh, the GPS locator uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, that's a very cool thing, too, yeah. as well. Yeah, would be would be great. And uh, yeah, there's there's many, many th props. And, and that movie for me also, it's a somehow I've been wondering why I like it so much. Tomorrow Never Dies. 
and it, it has to do with the graphics. I think the graphics were at that time very kind of the fonts looked really sleek and the kind of orange tone and everything and everything looked really good. And uh, there's something in that brand. The how how and in a way it's it's the strongest brand I think amongst uh, Pierce Brosnan's movies. And there's something. Yeah. I like it more than I, I like the brand even more than I like the movie. I like things from it. I like scenes from it. I like yeah. the visuals. I even like love the B and W's and everything. I mean, I've I been do thinking too. that should I buy that freaking 750? I'm googling every <laughs> now and then, just you know, <laughs> or rent it for a week. And I saw there's someone who rents it actually. So my wife would drive around and I would sit on the back seat. Oh my gosh! Hearings. But anyway, there's there's so much fun fun in that they, they managed to do a, a really strong brand around that movie. I think I agree. Even the music. I mean, to me, yeah. it was David Arnold's best. I mean, he yeah. put it all out there. He he was in a um, an interview where he said, "I put everything that's been in my mind for decades about what I wanted to hear from Bond music yeah. in one film because he wasn't sure he would get a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who could have known? Yes. Well, Klaus, thank you. Thank you so much. This is, um, I will tell you, we're going to be showing some pictures and video after this conversation of this sitting in my collection. It's It's got a coveted place. And of course, when you come and visit yes. one of these days, you'll you'll see it in all its glory there. Yes. Hey, I'm equally happy. It's been really fun to share this and uh, I'm excited to see the video. All right. Well, let's head over to the collection right now and see how it fits in with everything. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.